Hi everybody. From time to time I get sent requests from people who want to send me their stuff and have me review it. I always reply straight away with, uh, sure send me your stuff but I will make a very honest review no matter what I think of it. And most people don't get back to me. There was a good example of that recently. About the third or fourth person who wanted to send me a really cheap comms thing for a helmet. I said, yeah sure. But you know, I'll compare it to the Senna, which is really good. And uh, they had never heard anything else from them. Anyway, I did get contacted by Hurtle Gear, which is a company I've actually bought stuff from and find very reliable. Over in uh, WA, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> Might be South Australia, one of those over there. Um, and they wanted to send me a ram mount. Now, I also pretty much like ram mounts. So I said, yeah, look, send me it. I'll be very honest. And they had no hesitation in sending me it. And were very keen. So that's what they've done. They've sent me a uh, X-Grip phone holder that's supposed to go into the stem of your motorcycle forks. So, um, yeah, I'll show you what uh, happened with that. I've had it for about a month. Uh, I'll show you the ins installation problem I had, which was relative to the type of bike I have, not to the mount. Uh, a few minor problems I've had with it. And, but basically, I've had it for a month, and I'll be keeping it on the bike as a phone mount. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, time will tell whether it'll stand up to a lot of use and you know become loose or whatever. But you know, I've had it on a few off-road trips, uh, some fairly gnarly ones, and it's stayed on there. Sometimes I've even forgot to put the little rubber thing that keeps it on tighter on. So uh, anyway, I'll show you some of the stuff I've been doing with it, some of my first impressions, and then I'll talk about a longer impression. Well, the first problem I've encountered with this is probably really specific to the bike or the type of bike. So here's the stem mount. So it's got the mount for the phone on the top there. This is supposed to go into the stem. Now the stem on my bike is way down in there. Way, way down in there. So if I put it, if I put this into the stem so it comes out the back. Well, the phone's going to be down there. I mean, once I put the tank bag on, I'm not even going to see it. So, try putting it through to the front. If if it will fit, the phone's going to be kind of like still a bit hidden down there. It's not long enough. So I thought I'll swap it for. I've got another stem for a ram, a longer stem, but it's really big and bulky. So it's not even nothing. Nothing's going to fit in here. I mean, if I do manage to get it to fit there. I'm not going to be able to get to my key. So essentially, uh, a stem mount isn't going to work on a bike like this. If it was a set of clip-ons, the stem would be up here, be perfect. So I'm going to just use a handlebar mount instead, I hope. See if I can mount this and uh, see how the phone looks mounted with that. All right, after a fair bit of fiddling around, I've found the way I want to mount it. I've had to mount it off the side of the handlebars here, going across to the middle to put there. I tried lots of different mount positions. This is the only way I could get to see the actual dashboard, like speed and all that, as well as the phone from where my sitting position is. So, so far so good. I've got a few little problems already. This just keeps activating the buttons on the phone. It's really hard to find a spot where it doesn't. It's right in between two buttons. At one point it completely powered my phone off when I didn't ask it to. Well, you know, when I didn't intend to. And, uh, yeah, that's that's a little bit of a problem. It depends how stable that will stay now. We shall see. Uh, we'll take it for a little bit of a test run. That seems to still be there. Anyway, for the moment we're just going to see if it stays there. Quick ride around town. So yeah, I quite like the position there. I can I can glance down and look at it if I've got the maps on it. That'll be my next thing to try is uh, see if this improves my relationship with Google Maps. If I can actually see the map as well as hear the voice, it might help. You never know.
Oh, I've set a, a vague Google Maps thing to get me to Ganella Bar. It's telling me to go one way, I'm going to go the other. I'm going to see how that all works with my phone, this mount, my relationship with Google. See what happens, eh? Continue on Tatham Road for two kilometres. So this will be a bit of a test on the dirt as well. See how the mount stands up to that. realised I'll take it easy. <laughs> There's enough dust in the air. I did want to test how this will stand up to the bumps but slow bumps are hey, like that one, even worse. I don't know why my phone isn't reacting to whoa, gravity either. So, uh, so far so good with the mount. It seems to be a good spot for reading the phone, light-wise and angle-wise. I don't know why the phone isn't uh, reacting to gravity and showing me a landscape view instead of a sideways portrait. But that's probably to do with the phone. Now, these uh, little grippers holding onto the buttons have changed a few things on the phone unintentionally by me. So I might just see if I can get the phone off here, how difficult that is to quickly reset stuff whilst we're out on the bike because ease of use would be a thing, wouldn't it? but you know, it's stayed on the mount, it's kept its uh, power supply lead in yeah, it's a pretty good report card so far for it so I want to take my phone off there and adjust something on it unplug Take off the little things off-road, whoops, and it goes boing, that's just me not being used to it. So let's see, um, settings, auto-rotate had gone off somehow, okay, right. That's probably all I needed, bring the maps back up. That's better. Let's see if we can get it back in here without these levers doing stuff I don't want them to do. It's been a little bit of an issue, but again, once once you know it, see, like it's just turned the, the volume down. I didn't want to do that. I love the volume up, thanks. Okay, yeah, put these things back on it. Oh, for fuck's sake, see, it's 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 making stuff happen when it hits the buttons. People, no, I don't want that. Where's the other bit here? Okay. I think we're good. Well, that was a pretty good little test of it. So far, so good. Uh, I think uh, it's a bit of a win so far. A couple of small problems. Uh, the real test will be longevity, won't it? But for now, not too bad. I shall continue to review it over the rides to come. So there it is folks, there it is on the bike. That's the position I got it in at the minute. Um, ideally, I would have some room up here with a bar. So I'm looking at, uh, there's an option to have this screen taken up and away from the bike with a, a bar in there to put accessories on. That would be excellent to have this up there. Uh, I've got it where it is just so that I can still see the speedo and still see the phone, but that would be lovely to have it up there. Basically all I want it as is a GPS viewer when I'm using the phone as a you know, GPS or Google Maps or whatever you want to call it. So, I just got to get out of the way from this truck coming. But that's where it is for the moment, and uh, I will be keeping it on the bike because I really do like it. <coughs> um, yes, it's fiddly getting 
it not to interfere with the buttons on the phone that's you know I'm getting used to that I haven't seen any other problem with it yet to be honest I think I'd give it an 8 or a 9 out of 10 so thanks for watching this review thank you very much to Hurdle Gear for giving me the opportunity to check this out as I said I'm being honest about it I've told you exactly what I think so thanks for watching ride safe catch you on the next one